Well, greetings and welcome to 5-Minute Friday. As part of our video today, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the job of a fisherman in Jesus' day because it was a difficult one. Fishermen would work all year round. They would work in the heat of the summer. They would work in the cold of winter. Often they would fish all night long. And certainly Jesus' choice of Capernaum as his home base on the Sea of Galilee brought him into contact with all kinds of different fishermen. He chooses four fishermen, in fact, to be some of his closest disciples. Peter, Andrew, James, and John are all fishermen. And it's possible that Jesus chose these guys because of the imagery associated with their job and the mission that he was going to call them to. Or he could have just chosen them because they were a hearty group of people, accustomed to difficult work and long hours. Jesus is going to ask them uh, time and time again throughout Scripture to do things that, that, that don't really make sense to the fishing practices of the day. After fishing all night and catching nothing, he's going to tell them, cast your nets on the other side. Do it again. And, and so it's just amazing to see how many fishing images are used in the Gospels of Jesus Christ. One of the most important skills fishermen had uh, was making and mending nets. Now these nets were often made of linen, linen and every single day these nets had to be carefully cleaned and dried or they would quickly rot and wear out. And so the majority of a fisherman's life probably was spent mending nets. Net weights, small pieces of stone with holes drilled in them, were fastened to the bottom of those nets. And this too took time. Fishermen also had to be skilled in how to use those nets in the right way. If you go back to the Old Testament, you can find there how the Old Testament refers to catching fish in a variety of different ways, with hooks, with spears, and with several different types of nets. I want to talk about two of the nets that are used uh, here in the New Testament and that are mentioned in the Old. The first is the drag net. And the drag net's probably the oldest of the nets that we read about. Usually it was several hundred feet long and as much as 20 feet high. And the net was dropped by fishermen from boats several hundred yards from shore and parallel to it. Cork or wood floats would keep one edge of the net on the water surface while stone sinkers fastened to the other edge pulled it to the bottom. And as the fishermen pulled the net ashore, the net trapped any fish in its path. And when they, uh, fishermen dragged that net ashore, they would sort out the catch, throwing out the animals without fins and scales, which were uh, considered unclean under the law of Moses. And then they would clean and sell the rest of the fish, and they would have to give Rome's share to the tax collector. Jesus uses this dragnet as an illustration in his description of the kingdom of heaven. And James and John are probably mending this net when Jesus approaches them on regular regular basis. Another type of net I'll talk about is what's called the trammel net. It's composed of three different layers, three different walls, each reinforcing the other, and as the fish would pass through, the mesh would get smaller and smaller and smaller until the fish found themselves caught against that inner wall and became entangled. The net then was retrieved and the fish were extracted. The net was washed every single morning and because that's the nets that's traditionally used at night. In fact, in Luke chapter 5, this is most likely what's going on when Jesus asked him to, to go out and let their nets down for a catch. Sometimes fishermen encircled a shoal of fish with the trammel net and they would throw that net in the center of all the fish and they would have to jump into the water with the fish and with the net uh, to, to trap those fish that were caught in the net and pull it to shore. That's, that's probably what's happening in, in John chapter 21 when, when, when Peter has taken, out his, taken off his outer layer and he has to put it back on, jump in the water to swim to Jesus because of all that's going on here. So many different images that are given to us uh, here in Scripture. Besides the nets, fishermen of Jesus' day also used a hook and a line. In fact, Jesus tells Peter to cast a hook, catch a fish, and take a shekel from its mouth and pay the tax that was due in Matthew chapter 17. Archaeologists have actually found hooks from Jesus' time in small fishing villages along the shore of the Sea of Galilee. So there's all kinds of imagery that the scriptures use that is connected to fishermen. And while I'm not much of a fisherman myself, I know many of you are. And we're going to be talking all about Luke chapter 5 this Sunday in our lessons on the life of Jesus Christ. And Jesus' call of these fishermen to begin to catch something different. No longer fish. He's going to call them to fish for men. Can't wait for Sunday. I hope that you'll join us there as we continue looking at the most influential life in the history of the world. Jesus Christ, Savior of the world, King of the universe. I'll see you then. Until then, may God bless you as you strive to live for him.